Pastor Ed here with Online Daily Devotions for Monday, August the 17th, 2020. Today we begin a, a new week, week three of our Online Daily Devotions. The theme of the first week, as you may recall, was God's generosity and the abundance that we receive from God in life. And then the theme of last week was good news, which of course receives its clearest and most powerful expression in the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. And now for this week, as we shall see today and in the coming days, the overarching theme is, the, is God's saving work for all people, not just some. Once again, we're using those Taking Faith Home inserts for these daily devotions. As always, if you haven't received an email with the Taking Faith Home insert attachment, uh, please be sure to call or email the church office so that Cheryl can send it to you. And we'll begin this morning with those three parts of the service of responsive prayer in the ELW, the Lutheran hymnal. Um, then, of course, we'll take a look at the reading specifically assigned for today. Let us begin. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son that you have protected us through the night from all harm and danger. We ask that you would also protect us today from sin and all evil, so that our life and actions may please you. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us, so that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. Almighty God, bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Well, our reading for this morning is taken from uh, Isaiah 56. Um, again, it's that uh, section of, it's in that section of Isaiah where this is after the, uh, the Babylonian um, exile. Um, the Jewish people are um, beginning to realize some important things. Number one, that uh, they could worship God outside uh, of their own homeland, but also increasingly, and we're going to see in the passage this morning, they, that they, that as much as they are and will always remain the chosen people, and we're going to talk more about this, I think, tomorrow, um, all people, there's room for all people in God's family, in God's kingdom. We'll hear now the reading from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. Happy is the mortal who does this, the one who holds it fast, who keeps the Sabbath, not profaning it, and refrains from doing any evil. Do not let the foreigner join to the Lord say, the Lord will surely separate me from his people. And do not let the eunuch say, I'm just a dry tree. For thus says the Lord to the eunuchs who keep my Sabbaths, who choose the things that please me and hold fast my covenant, I will give in my house and within my walls a monument and a name better than sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it and hold fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain, and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. 
Thus says the Lord who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. I think it was the other two weeks ago, the first week we talked about that phrase, that old couplet, uh, how odd of God to choose the Jews. They were certainly uh, not the most impressive group of people to become God's chosen people. They were, they were in and of themselves outcasts. Um, but now God is expanding the circle even wider and saying, you know, kind of there's room for all the outcasts of the world you know, in my kingdom and in my family. Again, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I'll gather others, other outcasts, to, the, to them besides those already gathered. Made me think of the, the idea of adoption. Um, because in adoption, um, families expand um, beyond what they normally, naturally might do. Uh, and so adoption is, is, is a, a very good analogy for um, for the willingness of God to accept all people. There's a great story. Um, it was in an old Ann Landers column from years ago. And this woman wrote this. She said, Dear Ann Landers, it happened again today. My two sons and I were in a shopping mall and a total stranger felt the need to comment on the fact that my boys didn't look anything alike. Apparently my six-year-old decided it was time he explained the difference. I'm adopted, he said. That's when you have the same family, but not the same face. That's when you have the same family, but not the same face. And then there's another story. I may have used this as a very poignant story. Um, a, a woman once shared that when she was a tiny little girl, her parents died and she was put in an orphanage. Um, she was not a pretty child and no one seemed to really want her. But she longed, as any child in that situation would, she longed to be adopted and, and to be loved by a family. Uh, that memory goes all the way back for her. She thought about a day and night, but, but everything seemed to go wrong. Everything she did seemed to go wrong. Uh, maybe she thought afterwards that uh, she was just trying too hard uh, to get, make a good impression, to please people. And somehow that that drove them away probably wasn't the case, but that's how she internalized it. Well, then one day the head of the orphanage told her that a family was coming to take her home with them. She was so excited. She jumped up and down. She cried like a little baby. Um, but she was reminded that it was just a trial basis and it might not be a permanent arrangement. But, but in her heart, she, she hoped, she trusted, she believed that this time it would work out. So she went with the family. She started school. She was the happiest little girl uh, that anyone could imagine. Her life began to open up. Um, but then one day, a few months later, she skipped home from school, as she always did, so happy to, to go home to her family. She ran into the front door of the big old house that they lived in. No one was at home. But in the middle of the front hall was her battered suitcase with her little coat thrown across it. And as she stood there, it suddenly dawned on her what it meant. She didn't belong there anymore. Well, when the woman shared this with some people in a group, there wasn't a dry eye, but then she cleared her throat. And she said, almost matter-of-factly, this happened to me seven times before I was 13 years old. But she said, wait, don't, don't feel too badly. It was experiences like these that ultimately brought me to God. And there I found what I had always longed for, a place, a sense of belonging, a forever family. God's salvation, God's, what do we say, God's saving work is for all people. It doesn't matter where you come from, what you look like, um, what you may have done in your life or not done in your life. Um, Again, I, I, I know I shared this already in Daily Devotions, but I'll probably share it again because I always share with the catechism students. That my catechism students, there's nothing you could do to make God love you more. There's nothing you could do to make God love you less. Uh, and so these words in Isaiah are just so powerful. Um, my house shall, shall be a house of prayer for all people. Okay, so there's this, this unique um, selection of the Jewish people and, and, and we're going to see that that, that's not nullified. That doesn't change. But over the centuries and over time, and certainly, certainly by the time we get to the New Testament, 
and we get to the life and ministry of, of Jesus and then of the early church, the, the expansion, the inclusivity of God's kingdom and God's family becomes so important. Um, God's always welcoming, quote-unquote, outcasts uh, into his family. Um, it's almost as if there's a special place in his heart um, for everyone, but also and maybe even especially for the ones um, that no one else uh, would seem to feel would fit or are worthy. Um, that doesn't factor into it. God's love is so all-encompassing. His house of prayer will be for all peoples, um, and he'll gather more and more outcasts to the outcasts that were the people of Israel in the first place. Again, God's saving work is for all people, and we're going to emphasize that, and we'll see different ways of, of looking at that and describing that in the days to come. But let's close this morning uh, with a prayer for the week. God of the nations, we thank you for your mercy and grace that's meant not only for those we know and love, but for all people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.